Right, let's look at the um, data uh, for a particular contract uh, for the crude oil future. So we're going to zoom into crude oil and then looking at one specific month. Okay, um, Similar to equities, a reference to a futures contract is obtained via a symbol. So you need the symbol to be able to extract the price and other relevant information to go with it. Now, futures contracts are a little bit different from equities. Now, equities, um, you only need to quote the actual ticker and the ticker doesn't actually change. Uh, IBM will stay as IBM for a long, long time. Futures is a little bit different. There is a base symbol in the case of crude oil is CL and you need to add to that a code for the month slash year of delivery. So if we take the example of CLF16, uh, that means is CL, first of all, is crude oil. F represents the month of January. We'll come back to that. 16th means that this contract is uh, maturing in January 2016. So 16 here uh, signify the year 2016. There's a list here that is uh, showed you the corresponding code that ties in with each month. So for January is F, February is G, and on and on it goes. Um, you can also visit the link that's provided uh, by Jamie here. So here you have CLF16. Uh, that's the variable. And then symbols CLF16 here within here basically states that this is the symbol that you want to pull up. Um, so if we put CLF16 here, um, it will actually extract and pull out all the relevant information. It's a little bit hard to read, but basically what the information is provided here is you have the symbol. So you have 16, the root symbol is CL, and the asset name is actually light, sweet, crude oil. The exchange that it is traded in is NYMEX. Earlier when I pull out CME, they actually own uh, NYMEX. And the start date here is stated here, start date is 2012, January 19th. And the end date is 2015, uh, December 21st. That is the so-called maturity date or the last trading date of this futures contract. Uh, first traded and then you have the notice date. We'll come back to these uh, a little later. The expiration date um, is 2015, December 21st. This is actually quite an important uh, value to actually keep in mind of. Auto close date is the 17th. Now this is uh, something that Quantopian has built in itself. Uh, we'll come back to that a little later in the definitions below. The tick size is 0 0.01, meaning the price movement must be in the decimal of 0 0.01 um, or multiple of 0 0.01. It cannot go smaller than that. And the multiplier for this is 1000. The exchange full name is NYMEX. So uh, here's a brief explanation of some of the properties of the future object. So you have the root symbol, which is CL for crude oil. The start date really is the first date that the contracts exist on Quantopian. Now, the price of a contract might be not a value uh, because they are not actively traded earlier. Uh, the auto close date is the two days prior to the earlier of the end date, which is the last traded date, and the notice date. Typically, the definition of notice date is that the you are notified by the exchange that you have a delivery, okay, or rather you receive the actual futures itself. So you can actually follow this link and have a look at the detailed definitions of it. So in backtesting, uh, positions in contracts will be automatically closed out on their auto close date. So that's really what this what this uh, auto close date uh, is built in for, so that the contracts automatically close out, so that you don't actually get into a situation whereby uh, for example, you're still holding on to the crude oil futures where you actually ended up having to deliver 1,000 barrels of crude oil. Uh, that would not be too good. So basically, this closed it out um, two days before either or, either or end date or notice date, whichever is earlier. The tick size I already mentioned. This is uh, the minimum movement or in multiples of it. Um, the multiplier really is number of units per contract. A contract for CL is 1,000 barrels of oil. So if you want to actually extract the details which is contained in this uh, future object, uh, you can use the variable 
and then use the dot method uh, root symbol which is this one here and you will get CL likewise you can get the asset name the end date um, whether the end date is a weekday or not or what rather I should say what date is the end date of the contract itself so in this case the end date is on a Monday so you have the Monday which is uh, what well, zero here signify um, Monday and the multiplier here is a thousand so this is the one thing to keep in mind um, the price of crude oil is always uh, denoted in um, units okay uh, dollar per unit so if I come back to grow all here and we look at the uh, quote itself the May 2017 um, last traded price is fifty dollars and nineteen cents per barrel now we recall that each futures contract um, represent one has a multiplier of a thousand so that means if you multiply a thousand by fifty, that's that means this future contract is, itself has a notional value of fifty thousand uh, plus sundries.